Okay, round one, we're keeping this hand. Looks nice to me. We don't have any colorless mana sources yet, but we've got a two drop, we have a removal. I think it's certainly worthy of a keep. That's a nice draw, actually. Ah, perhaps black-white, huh? So, I don't think I want to complete disregard the healer. I'd rather complete disregard, like, a probably a war cleric. Or, well, I won't be able to do it to a Zulaport chain mage, I guess. Ooh, well, I think I found my complete disregard target. And I kind of feel like I want to do it ASAP. Only be even though he doesn't have colorless mana source yet. Well, that's interesting. Oh, there I, I said it again. Interesting. So I can play uh I can play Hedron Crawler. What does that set me up for? I mean, doesn't set me up for a Myers Mouse or Pathfinder anytime real soon. Still a couple turns away from that. I mean, I can disregard the Depleter now, even though he doesn't have colorless mana yet. And that lets me just go Havoc Sower next turn. But even Havoc Sower is not going to be good without the colorless mana. He's going to get to swing with Depleter. Hmm. I'm going to go Crawler. We're going to we're going to gear up a little bit for a bit of a longer game, I think. There's a chance especially if he doesn't have colorless mana readily available that complete disregard is is going to be better suited taking something else out. Seems fairly likely that he's... black-white, mostly because of the healer, but he could still definitely be another black-red. No play. Translators. Actually, Translator is a real sick one here. We're going to play that. Because I like it. Is that a good enough reason? Let's just go Pathfinder or Myers Mouse next turn. Myers Mouse is going to hit two spells and give us a creature. I kind of feel like that's going to be a bit more on the spicier side. So now I can even, which is kind of nice actually, I can attack. Let's just make the Myers Mouse a creature, I guess. So you discard. You Oh wait, I think I got to add my manas first here. Guess the problem now is I can't activate Death Touch on my Slaughter Drone. But I'm 100% getting rid of two spells. And I'm getting a 3-3. Like, it's a good... It's good value. I'm paying six mana to get rid of two threats and get a 3-3 creature. It's it's tough to deny the, the value of that. So he's also black-red. I mean, yeah, technically I can attack with Slaughter Drone. But I don't mind trading uh, 
crossroad for a depleter, I don't think. No blocks. You know what's funny? All I think about now is the word interesting. <laughs> My only thoughts go to interesting. Ever since that commenter left that comment, I only think about the word interesting now. I would be like, yeah, I'd put another interesting there. I'd probably say interesting here. <laughs> Consuming Sinkhole. Now that is what was what's known as a rare spawn main deck card. Exile target land creature. You know, I should remember that consuming sinkhole can deal four damage to a player. I think that's that's actually kind of relevant. Not really for our deck, but in general it is actually kind of relevant. Brute strength is good with the slaughter drone, but we're gonna jam the Pathfinder this turn, so let's just swing with our our duders. Make some good use of mana here. Alright, so he can use Depleter twice, which means he's at a virtual, like, 10 life. That's pretty cool. So I can go Forerunner of Slaughter. And I can still use Complete Disregard. Smash with a lot of things. The cool thing is I can go forward or slaughter, give it haze. Yeah, I think we're doing that. This translator, I'm kind of beating the crap out of myself with it, but seems worth it. So if he has unnatural endurance, I guess it's a bit of a punishment. But we're going to go for it. All right, did not have the endurance. So mirror match with main deck uh, consuming sinkhole, which I guess is, I mean, it's reasonable against us. It, he got us pretty good there. He got our, our land, but thankfully it was off the back of getting rid of a bunch of value out of his hand. Although, let's be to be fair, he wasn't going to be able to play Cinder Hellion or Kozilek's Pathfinder this game. So, a little bit less good in that respect. But his deck definitely seems less cohesive than ours does. Yeah, I don't think I remember that Consuming Sinkhole can deal four damage to a player, which is, in fact, pretty decent, but I'm still not going to bring it in, I don't think. In Spark Mage's game, it does not kill anything that we saw. And other than that, I don't really have much of a sideboard plan. I still am not on board with Process or Assault, I don't think. If I had more ways to exile, it would be. But I do not. All right. Let's go to game two. All right, I think we're going to mulligan this. We just got a grip full of black spells and two red lands, so we're going to want better than that. Um, 
This one's a bit sketchy if I don't draw more land. We're on the draw, so I could keep and bottom anything that's not a land. Hope to draw some land. I think I'm going to keep this one. There's enough chance of drawing lands in the next couple turns where I think ultimately could work out for us. Like, if we rip a red land, we're in really great shape. Because then at least we have a couple early threats that are good. If we just start jamming lands, we're obviously cooking with gas, too. I don't think this was a mold of five. It's debatable, though. All right. Just in the nick of time, thankfully. So... Now I can actually play Forerunner of Slaughter, which I think I'm going to do, hopefully, before he kills my Slaughter Drone. Okay. Predator. The Predator. Ooh. That's even sexier. Hmm. I'm trying to think here. I can actually I can play for I can attack with Slaughter Drone, see if he blocks. Play Forerunner post combat. The problem with that is I'm curious if he's gonna trade a Predator for a Forerunner. And the question is, do I want to? I, I guess I kind of do. Um, I think we're going to offer the trade. I don't have to, though, do I? My other option is just play Forerunner Pass, leave up this to block that. Which is also decent. It sets up for a Swarm Surge better. I think we're actually just going to attack for two. This is weird, I know. But my thinking is, if he blocks, I want to brute strength over. I think he would trade for a four runner of slaughter, which makes me prefer to take the four and bash back more. It's weird. I, I get it. Like, I could have brought my four runner in and given haste and swung for five and offered this trade. I just feel like that's a trade he probably wants to make. Like, now he gets to bash for four, but I get to smash back with Brute Strength or Swarm Surge for more damage, presumably. All right. Didn't work out quite the way I wanted to. But we got the land, so I guess that's good news. So, do we play the skimmer first or the sower? I'm not going to be able to pump sower if I play the skimmer, but I still think we play the sower because it's more potential damage output. It's got a weird deck. No attacks. So I can pump. Yeah, I think we just swing with Havoc Sower. And we're going to follow up with Silent Skimmer, I think. And the game plan now is set up for Swarm Surge plus Brute Strength, especially with the land, which 
seems like it would be a pretty absurd amount of damage. Especially on a slaughter drone, although I have to pay to give it what I need. Envoy, sure. It's got haste, too. Land here would be pretty sweet. Okay. Well, still looking pretty good, actually. Uh, so we can swing for the fences. Follow up with Sentinel. If I Swarm Surge now, I bash for... Is it lethal? Four plus five is nine. 11 plus another 2, 13. We're actually one short of lethal, but then I think we're our best plan is to set up for I think we just swing with Sower and Skimmer. I don't mind if he cracks back with the Envoy either. Hmm. So now I can actually... I don't think I'm actually going to pump. I think I'm going to leave up Hemorrhage. Because I can with the Holdout Settlement. So I think it's in our best interest to play the, the Sentinel here and pass. And now with Holdout Settlement I can still cast... Reality hemorrhage in a pinch. So I basically disregarded a couple points of damage to potentially stop an ally from getting haste or kill a Valakut predator in response to a land. Alright, now I think I'm just going to hemorrhage the chasm guide, I think. Since predator is not a very good blocker. All right. Well, now we're in pretty good shape, I would say. So, Swarm Surge. All right. So, opponent appeared to have a little bit of mana issues, but like I said, I don't think they had a super cohesive deck. They had some, like, allies. They had some... I mean, Touch of the Void and Oblivion Strike are clearly good. What did we see game one out of them? They got color screwed game one, but they just didn't appear to have a super cohesive deck. They have like these weird creatures like Predator and Cinder Hellion in there alongside like allies and some Devoid stuff. So I think that we were pretty favored in this match. All right, we'll see you in round two.